Last time you saw us, Robbie and I were making our way south on the Pacific coast of Mexico. We stopped in mini anchorages and visited small beach towns until we arrived in the Puerto Vallarta area. We almost to Puerto Vallarta! We took in the sights and sounds of the big city and popular tourist day tripping islands. The area was colorful and bright, but we were only just entering the sailing region known as Costa Alegre, or Joyful Coast. With a name like that, what glorious, delightful circumstances would we observe next? After rounding the bend of Cabo Corrientes, we spent a restful night at the teeny tiny Punta Ipala. We started moving again before the sun came up. Our intention has been to visit as many places as possible, and not just sail offshore and skip everything. So this jump required making about 50 nautical miles within 10 or 12 hours. Sounds pretty straightforward. But you know, it's whatever the wind and the ocean wants for us. We passed over giant clouds of red water. At first we thought, this might be whale related. There are lots of whales around. It wasn't any sort of small crustacean. And then we finally started accepting what it really was, an algal bloom. This would not be the last time we would see it. Areas filled with the red cloud were devoid of marine life. Algal blooms can be toxic or they can simply just suck up all the oxygen in the water. Towards the end of the afternoon, the wind became favorable and pushed us nicely towards the village of Perula. Only a fish makes it day better, as usual. <laughs> The gulls and the frigates of Perula knew exactly what was up at our boat as we arrived just as the evening approached. <laughs> oh, we missed it in the... Even without a proper machete, we also enjoyed a young green coconut plucked from the beachfront of La Cruz, its juice ready for drinking. Four cuts up here, or three cuts, and you can open that out and it stays flat. Or you can, if you want to put it in the ice box, you can. You're like shaving a bald head. You can go tuck, 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 and tuck, and you crack out. A little hole. These are good to put in a nice box like that. Something woke me up early. I could hear it through the hull. We searched the village of Perula for drinks and ice. Mostly found jackfruit, though.
Of course, the dinghy landing was calm when we entered. But there was a little bit of swell on the way out. It was time to put the camera away. We hopped quickly to the small islands of Pajarera and Cocinas. Robbie prepared for the hunt, but there were only a couple of little colorful butterfly fish and a lone file fish. We gave the bottom of Rosa a gentle scrub and pulled up the anchor for the second time that day. We passed the colorful villas of Kemala and imagined all the rich barons who lived there. I don't hope that going has a nice big rope on it. We tucked in at Paraiso, a series of about three or four beaches decorated with palm trees and villas belonging to an exclusive looking resort. The landscape looked like it might be a green wonderland during the rainy season, but at the moment the water was where the life was at. As soon as we arrived, there was an encouraging sight of lively birds, and what we came to realize was not just another cloud of an algal bloom. We got our gear together, ready to explore the islands and beaches. A quick catch, a rainbow runner for dinner. I was interested in the geology and ecology of the area, while Robbie remained concerned about getting one more fish among the shallow, jagged rocks that we had narrowly avoided earlier with the sailboat. Pelicans continued attacking the balls of bait fish for the two days or so that we were anchored there. The bait balls were densely packed, and we wondered why they didn't try to escape to another place. Very trivial-ish. It's coconut Thai curry gravy. This little porpoise rock marked our approach to Tenacatita. Looks exactly like the boat I grew up on. It's like the hull, the mast. Copy. There has been some strife on the outer edge of Tenacatita. A private company has been trying to reserve the entire peninsula to build a resort and has been battling with villagers and restaurant owners over access to and use of the land. The resort developers are clinging vigorously to the pieces that they can physically control and patrol. As we lazily strolled around, we were kindly told to keep out and keep away from some abandoned paths and palapas. The 
edge of the anchorage is known as the fish tank, with clear looking water and some remainder of reef. The area being so beautiful, it was easy to see why people might fight over it. Seeing families enjoying a nice carefree day at the beach and enjoying a bite to eat at the Palapa seems like an act of righteousness here. We pulled out our last hundred pesos and decided to taste what they were making at the one remaining restaurant that the resort developers hadn't managed to force out. One specialty of this coastline is called the Royal de Mar. Oh, sorry, burn lips. Anyways, we came here just to have this dish. Fish and shrimp wrapped in bacon, smothered in tangy almond sauce. Very interesting. Just exactly what I expected. Robbie immediately put his mind to the task of recreating this recipe on board. And after eating that, it was time to row off some calories. Sneaky dolphins. Next stop was Barra de Navidad. We were looking forward to experiencing the deluxe, flat, calm waters of the inner lagoon. And the lagoon would not disappoint us. However, we first made a stop at the Bay of Malake, an anchorage just before the entrance to Barra. And we regretted that immediately, as I will soon explain. Coming I mean, really fast, huh? After several weeks of limited protection from the constant Pacific swell in many anchorages all down the coast, the shallow lagoon was a welcome change. But before entering, we had the dinghy stolen from the back of the boat at night in Malake, which is a bay just across from Barra de Navidad. It's pretty upsetting. We were using the dinghy a lot for fishing. We were starting to see the advantages of having a, at least a, a small outboard engine against uh, tide and wind when making landings. Pretty much had our guard down, even in the uh, the Charlie's charts, it says something about locking up your dinghy here in the lagoon. Well, we were out in the the bay outside, and I mentioned it to Robbie that we should probably lift up the dinghy alongside the boat, but we didn't do that, so we paid the price, which for us is a pretty hefty one. They came in the middle of the night, I felt a weird movement, a boat uh, came alongside ours and bumped it a bit, and they carefully untied the dinghy. We've got two lines that attach it to the the boat and they carefully undid them took our little two horsepower suzuki and uh, left the dinghy for dead on the beach up on some rocks flipped over despite the setback we enjoyed visiting the narrow spit that made up the downtown of barra de navidad we lamented the loss of our outboard for a little bit spoke to fellow sailors about what we might do to track it down but life went on as usual in the oceanfront town. The good vibes and good surf and one borrowed surfboard from our neighbor got us up in no time. You guys know I'm watching you, eh? Yeah. He's so cute. <laughs> the lagoon is sandy and shallow. It's very easy to run aground on the soft banks throughout the area. Trust us, we had our experience.
Here, we met up with friends that we've made as we've sailed throughout Mexico. Barra seemed like the natural meeting point for sailors coming down this coast. And naturally here we had to try the famous pastry treats that are delivered daily to the boats out in the anchorage by the French baker. Okay, merci. Bonne journée. Bonne journée aussi. Bonne journée. This is going to be a marvelous experience. It's always worth tasting a chocolate croissant wherever you will find yourself in the world. No wonder people stay here all the time. Join us next time as we escape the tenacious grasp of Barra de Navidad to explore the rest of the vibrant Pacific Mexican coast and to find out about the 180 degree turn we make in our future plans.